So in this video, I have a little problem for us to solve, and it's going to help us introduce a few other features of Java. So what is the problem? Well, I want to read in five numbers from the user and add them together. Sounds simple enough. First thing I have to do is I have to be able to read in things from the user. We do this using a type called scanner. And so I'm going to make a new scanner. And I'm going to wrap that scanner around system.in. So just like system.out is an object that is connected to standard output, system.in is connected to standard input. We have an error here. And it turns out it can't find scanner, doesn't think that it's a type. And if you have familiarity with Scala, you know this type of error message only means we're missing an import statement. Java also has import statements, like Scala, and in Eclipse we have the nice shortcut Control shift and o will do the import for us. And so it adds this line, import java.util.scanner. It turns out that the imports in Java, while they are similar in many ways to the ones in Scala, they are not the same. There are a few key differences. Uh, one, if I wanted to import everything from util, I would not use an underscore, I would use a star. So scanner is still visible, but so are a whole bunch of other things like array lists and, and lists, which we'll use later on. Um, the other thing is that they don't nest. Okay, and this can be significant because one of the things that I'd like to be able to do is I'm getting tired of, of having to type in system.out.println of hello world. And we can shorten this up a little bit using something in uh, Java called a static import. The normal imports only allow you to import things from packages. So we can, uh, at least in Java, they're going to end normally in a class name or a star. So we have package dot package dot and then uh, you know a class name or a star. Uh, and it's, it allows you to shorten names. Okay? Import does not do what a pound include does in C and actually bring code in. It just brings something into scope so that it can be found and you can use shorter names. So if I want to do an import static system dot now in Scala this would be perfectly happy code because it turns out that since system.out works here, system is inside of a package called java.lang, and java.lang is imported by default, and in Scala, your imports nest. So if something has already been imported and you want to pull stuff from inside of it, you don't have to specify the whole thing. In Java, they do not. So we have to use the full name here, even though our code could see it. Now we're getting a warning here because we're not actually using that yet. Well, we can use it by doing that. If I also want to be able to shorten the in, I can import everything in system. I'm not certain that's really a good idea there. And in fact, it is recommended that these static imports be used very rarely in Java. Um, turns out that you don't use system.in that much. You use system.out a lot more for the print lines, and I might like that that shorter format. Um, okay, so we're ready to read. If I want to read one number, I can call sc.nextint. That will read a number. Let's go ahead and declare an integer called sum. Something to note with the, I mentioned val and var and the fact they don't exist. The difference in, in Scala between val and var was the fact that Vals were immutable, they couldn't change, whereas vars are mutable. If you want a variable that can't change in Java, you use the final keyword. And this is greatly underused in Java, in part because you actually have to type six extra characters to get it there. You know, in some ways it seems silly, that's, that's not that much work, but it turns out that's enough to discourage people from, from actually doing it. Sum plus equals the next int, oh, and we 
If I'm going to use it, I need to give it a value. But you'll notice that this right here, this line compiles just fine. This is another difference between Java and Scala. You can declare variables without giving them values. So I could write my code like this. Once again, while this compiles, I'm going to say don't do it. You should always initialize your, your variables, and we'll see other reasons why uh, in a bit when we start putting some class-level variables. If I wanted to add five numbers, of course, the horrible way to do that would be to repeat that line five times. The better way to do that is to write a loop, and we'll come back in the next video, and we'll talk about the options for doing that inside of Java and what they look like.